the Ford Motor Company redesigned its midsize cars for 72. We smoothed the ride. We made front disc brakes standard. It's quiet because it's a Ford. And Motor Trend Magazine named the Grand Torino Sedan of the Year. Throughout its history, the Ford Motor Company has produced many spectacular and brilliant cars. Some of those vehicles are still on the road today, such as the best-selling Ford F-150. This also includes the Ford Mustang, the car that started a bit of a muscle car revolution. But many of Ford's automobiles are also no longer with us. One of those is the Ford Gran Torino. The Gran Torino officially made its debut in the 1970s, before it disappeared for good in 1976. When the third generation of the Ford Torino made its appearance in 1972, so did the Gran Torino. The Torino was revamped for 1972 while retaining many features from the last generation. The 1972 Torino style heavily included Coke bottle styling and highlighted the long hood short deck appearance. Three new models, the Torino, Gran Torino and Gran Torino Sports were added to the Torino lineup. The biggest modification to the Gran Torino was a sizable egg crate grille in an oval hole. There were chrome bezels around the headlamps on each side of the big oval grille of the Gran Torino. The front bumper and hood of the base Torinos were distinctive, setting them apart from the Gran Torino variants. The front fenders of the Torino had a flared design around the wheel opening, while the rear quarter panel had a prominent character line that went all the way to the back bumper. Rectangular lights with pointed ends were recessed within a full-width rear bumper. All of the interiors were brand new and the instrument panel was upgraded and made largely of ABS plastic. A speedometer, fuel gauge, temperature gauge and many warning lights were all housed in the five round pods of the typical instrument cluster. A vent for the direct air ventilation system was located in the leftmost pod. The base engine was the 250 cubic inch uh, or 4.1 liter for those of you outside the US. It was an inline six in all models except the Gran Torino Squire station wagon and the Gran Torino Sport which used used the 302 small block V8. The engine options included the 302, a 351 Windsor or Cleveland, a 351 Cobra Jet, a 400 and a 429. 73 Ford Torino, the solid midsize that gives you confidence on the road. Incredibly smooth riding, stable, strong and quiet. The most obvious change for the 1973 model year was a new front fascia, required to meet the new federal regulations. The Torino's front end featured totally new sheet metal from the firewall forward, with a blunt more squared off fascia replacing the previous year's pointed prow. Separate grille designs were still maintained for Torino and the Gran Torino models, they mimicked the 1972's in design. The Gran Torino now had a more rectangular grill with the parking lamps horizontally placed in the grill, but the quad headlights were still surrounded with a chrome bezel. Base Torino models had a wider full-width grill that surrounded the headlamps. However, the parking lamps were located on the outer edge of the fascia. The leading edge of the hood was squared off to follow the fascia's lines, and all models shared the same hood. For 1973, the Gran Torino Sport had its own unique emblem, which it displayed in the grill and on the trunk lock cover. The laser stripe was revised to a slightly different shape and ran higher along the body side. The Sport no longer had a hood scoop and the ram air induction option was gone. Not too large or too small. Styling, like a Thunderbird. Right system, like a Thunderbird. There are other mid-sized cars. Monte Carlo, Cordoba, but none look like Elite. Ford announced to its dealers in January of 1974 that the new Gran Torino Elite, Ford's entry in the mid-size luxury car market, would be available for sale as of the week of February 18th of 1974. The Elite was Ford's response to Chevrolet's popular low-priced luxury coupe, the Monte Carlo. 
The Elite was described by Ford as a totally new two-door hardtop with Thunderbird-inspired styling, solid engineering, and personal luxury, plus mid-size economy. From 1975 through 1976, Grand Torinos were used in the popular Spelling Goldberg Productions TV series Starsky and Hutch. The producers needed a flashy specialty car for the main characters to drive. Producers had originally wanted a Camaro, but since Ford was the least supplier for on-screen cars through their studio TV car loan program, Eventually, it was decided by the producers that a bright red 1975 Grand Torino two-door would be the vehicle of choice. To make the Torino less mundane, a large white vector stripe was added. Aluminum 5-slot mag wheels and larger rear tires replaced the stock wheels and tires, and air shocks were added to give the car an aggressive brake. This Torino's got spirit, looks, and it's built solid. What more could you want? For the 1975 model year, the Ford Torino received a number of minor improvements, but was for the most part unchanged. The model lineup received only one change, the Grand Torino Elite. It was dropped. The Elite became an independent model and marketed simply as the Ford Elite. All Torinos featured solid-state ignition systems for 1975, which improved starting, performance, and fuel economy, while reducing maintenance costs. The 1975 model year saw virtually no changes to the exterior styling. The only significant change was that the Torino models adopted the Grand Torino grille and front fascia. The Federal Clean Air Act prompted Ford to install catalytic converters for 1975 to help meet the new emission standards. Ford revised the based engine on all Torinos to the 351 engine. Along with this change, the Cruise-O-Matic transmission became standard. No manual transmissions were available. The 1976 model year saw no major changes to the Torino. The Gran Torino Sport was discontinued. The new options for the 1976 model year included a power trunk release and an automatic parking brake. Gran Torino two-doors could be ordered with the center console when optional bucket seats were specified. There were no styling changes made to the Torino for 1976. Four Torinos were reported to have major rust problems within the first five years of ownership. To further worsen the corrosion problems, the 1969 through 1973 Torinos were reported to have severe paint peeling problems. As a result, the four Torinos had the lowest resale value of any American intermediate cars in the 1970s used car market. 1976 would be the final year for the Ford Torino. Hey, hey, that about wraps it up on the Ford Grand Torino. Did you have one? Did you know of anyone who had one? How about that Starsky and Hutch show back in the 70s? That was one of my favorite shows growing up. Just an awesome show. Hey, leave us your comments below. We want to know what you think about the Ford Gran Torino. And as usual, we couldn't continue this channel without your help. A big thank you uh, to our subscribers. Yeah, we couldn't do it without you guys. Hey, if you're not a subscriber, please help us out. And it's free. It didn't cost you anything. Uh, and please share the video. Subscribe and hit that bell for future notifications as well. This is Michael J. for the Boca Brothers. Thanks for watching.